So here we're just working on a freezer that has been uh, freezing up periodically. Once in a while this whole coil back here would just get completely full of ice. And that was caused by the defrost circuit not defrosting properly. So we got our amp meter here. Just went ahead and checked the wires going into the heating element. You can see we got four amps there. So the bottom one's good. I also accidentally um, touched it and burned my finger pretty good. So make sure you're very careful. It's weird though because this part isn't hot and then once you get right down there, which is what tricked me into touching it, I was like, oh, this is cold. And then you touch down there where it's actually heated and it's very hot. Up here, our other defrost element, which goes through the coil, you can see that we are pulling also a nice 3.6, around 4 amps up there also. So we know that that's good to go. Made sure that the uh, defrost timer was still turning. And I thought it was possible that it was an intermittent defrost timer. Sometimes the defrost timers will get stuck once in a while, but not all the time. But the other thing you got to consider is if the system is temperature or pressure terminated. Because your defrost timer will cycle it into a defrost how often as you'd like it to. Let's say once every eight hours it goes into a defrost. And it will defrost for a set amount of time, like 15 to 25 minutes. So, when the system runs into a defrost, it'll defrost for that amount of time or until a temperature or a pressure is met inside the box, which is the freezer. That is done by this little switch up here. But there's a red wire going from the end terminal over into our defrost termination switch and then a black wire coming out going to the X. Pretty much if you see these things swelled, like this one is right here, it means that they're bad. And I'm guessing what was going on is this thing was terminating the defrost pretty much immediately. So it would cycle into a defrost, maybe running a defrost for just a couple minutes. Only running the defrost element for a couple minutes isn't enough to get all the ice out. Therefore, the unit would freeze up after a while. So what we're going to have to replace on this thing is this defrost termination switch. And what we're going to do so that they don't have to defrost this freezer manually until we get the part in is I'm actually just going to cut one of the wires that are leading into there just like that and I'm going to safe it off with some electrical tape and wire nuts and then we will be good to go until we come back with our new switch and uh, what that's going to do is this defrost system is just going to run for the amount of time that we actually set on the defrost timer with this one I'm guessing that 25 minutes is going to be plenty of time to melt everything off so we're just going to set it at 25 minutes. Right now it's set like to 60 because they were trying to adjust it up to make it work. So we're back. We have the proper part with us. As you can see it did not get all frosted up while we were gone. So we went ahead and shut the power off to the unit. We're going to go ahead and make sure there's nothing on the N or the X terminal or across. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our old sensor which is actually just kind of froze there somehow. And we safed off this wire last time. Pull these wires out. And that is our old sensor removed. And now take our new one, which has a black and a blue. Now when that thing warms up to 55 degrees, it's going to close, which will send power to the solenoid inside the defrost timer, which will terminate the defrost. So again, just looking at the numbers on here, we've got an F50 minus 20. So that means it's going to close at 50, and then it won't reopen again until it gets down to negative 20. That'll ensure that the freezer cools down properly before it goes into another defrost. And you can see how this blue is pushed out. That should be all pressed in, like kind of on this side. But when they get moisture in there, they freeze and that messes everything up. I think there's like a thermal disc in there. We're gonna pop this one open. I think we can probably just... 
So there's our wire connections. Those actually didn't look too good in there, did they? You can see they were actually pretty corroded. That's where the moisture got was up underneath there. So it caused this to push out and kind of ripped it off of those electrical connections. Yeah, that's not very nice looking. And then underneath here, not sure how we're going to be able to get into the rest of this thing. I'm very surprised at how tough this is. I'm just going to give it a squeeze. There's definitely there's a contact in there. Okay, so that was all just insulating material. We just broke up around there. Oh. Oh, it does have a thermal disc. Now I'm, now I'm even more confused. These things are just not very easy to take apart. Okay. This is what I was expecting to see. So this thermal disc must push up on a, a little pin that we lost or, or a little spring. That actually closes our contacts then. Just because this is a better contact point and it is handling 120 volts. So this must snap up and this thermal disc pushes that ring up. Just uh, not very easy to get them apart since they're like epoxied together. Or at least not very easy to get them apart non destructively. So anyway, I guess that's all I have to say about those little thermal defrost termination switches. Pretty effective at keeping your refrigeration system pretty efficient because they only force it to defrost as long as it is necessary rather than defrosting excessively long. Just kind of finds that middle ground between too little and too much defrost. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed and talk to you later.